It was the Halloween of 2001, and I was seven. It was freezing, probably within the 20 to 30 degree range, but I was determined on going out anyways. I wanted my pillowcase to be stock full of sweets. I dressed as a cat, not too hard to imagine that. My mom noticed a very tall man dressed in all black. Mom said he had on black jeans, black trench coat, and a black hockey mask. He had no kids with him, so that was a huge red flag to my mother. But he did have a pumpkin basket to put his candy in. He followed us around house to house, always stayed back three or four houses according to my mom. After 20 or so minutes, she shrugged it off, thinking this was some really tall kid just innocently out trick-or-treating. But the more she said she kept shrugging it off, the more uneasy she felt. Now, I do remember my pillowcase was only half full at the time, and my mom hurrying us home and me being super pouty about it. I do not, however, remember mom putting the house on lockdown after we got in the front door, but she remembers and said she did it very quickly. I ate some candy, brushed my teeth, and got into bed. My mother laid down next to me. I remembered this and thought it was a little weird since I was sleeping on my own at 7. Now this is where my mom really helped me out with this story, as I had no idea until we talked about it earlier. Fast forward to the morning. There was a pumpkin basket full of candy with a note on top that said meow and chicken scratch on our front porch right outside the front door. My mom threw out the candy in case it was tampered with and she burned up the note. Now what creeps me out, and I had just found out from my mom earlier, is that in the middle of the night she got up from my bed to recheck the house, looked out the window, and saw him, in our front lawn staring at the house with a pumpkin basket in his hand. She didn't think he noticed her. She called the police immediately. She briefed the officer on what had happened, and the officer said he'd do a few rounds and patrol the area. My mom never heard back from the officer that night, or ever, she said. Mom also told me she stayed up the entire night with a pistol in her lap after seeing him in the front yard. Since that night and up until right now, nothing weird with him has happened since. But as for his intentions, I have zero idea. Last year, right around the weekend of Halloween, I was late to show up to a friend's Halloween party. I had a supper to go to right before completely across town. When I left it, it was about 10pm and I had an hour drive ahead of me, but if I took a shortcut into a not so safe part of town, I would save 25 minutes. Big mistake. As I'm waiting at a red light in the sketchiest part of town, I look over to the sidewalk and I see three men, dressed up as the Purge, heading towards my vehicle. I look around and I see that there are no other cars, nor pedestrians. These guys start coming over to me faster now, all of them carrying weapons. One had a baseball bat, one had a crowbar, and one had an axe. Whether they were just playing a Halloween prank or not, it was still the scariest experience of my life, especially because right before the light turned green, they approached my window and one of them even tried pulling on my passenger side handle before I peeled away. Never will I try to go through the sketchiest part of town on Halloween again. I am 38 and this happened more than 20 years ago. My cousin and three friends and I went to a local cemetery in Grand Prairie, Texas on Halloween. The way the cemetery is set up is in two parts. The old part is kind of fenced off. It has an entry you can drive through but there are fences on either side of the rock road and you can turn into this part from a main road called 3rd Street. You can follow a number of the parts of the rock road if I remember right and one of the paths the rock road takes leads to the new part of the cemetery. We walk past the old part on the main road and then we walk to the edge of the newer part. Once you come to the next road that runs into 3rd Street, you've hit the end of the cemetery. We turned down that road and stayed on the edge of the cemetery and walked probably 50 to 100 yards and decided to set our Ouija board down. Yes, bad idea. We wanted to stay close to the edge just in case any crazy stuff goes down. And it did, especially towards the end. We set the board down and we started getting responses right away. I don't remember any responses in particular other than the one coming up a couple of minutes later. 
Whatever was there didn't like us, so we moved pretty shortly after we started. It just had a bad vibe and all of us sensed it. After that, we started walking, staying close to the edge. My cousin walked by a water spigot and he was about 5 feet away, and the thing turned on right as he was walking by. It wasn't a sprinkler system or anything like that at all. It could be a timer, but who knows. We didn't move that far ahead, skipped over a few graves and set it down again and started asking questions. This one didn't like us either. We did get a few responses, but the only response I remember was, I'll kill you five. We're like, okay, what's going on? When one of us realized there were five of us, right after that, we all let out a gag as something started to smell bad. We all walked across the street to the parking lot of a beauty salon or some other kind of business. My cousin was like, forget this, and walked back across the street. He then said something like, oh, the smell's gone, I think. We all walked back over cautiously, but there was no smell at all. Weird. At this point, we realized we were probably dealing with something we shouldn't be messing with, so we decided to leave. Of course, everyone wanted to walk alongside the road of the newer part and through the older one. Not me. I wanted to walk right back up the road and the side street back to 3rd street. My friends were all like, no, we gotta show we aren't afraid. I was afraid. Forget them. But I sure wasn't about to go by myself, so I went with them. Nothing out of the ordinary at first, but as we were getting closer to the entrance, one of my friends yelled, and we all started running. I think I was the only one that looked back. I can't remember whether I actually saw it or not, but I believe I did. It was like I saw it in my head, but not with my eyes. What I believe I saw was big. It was transparent, but it had features. It looked similar to a thing from the metallic shirt and CD cover from Jump Into the Fire. It had these spike things around its arms. I guess the best way to describe it is it was like a leather spiked necklace, but worn around the top of the shoulders and went underneath the armpit. But then I saw one of the craziest things I know for a fact I saw with my own eyes in my entire life. We were all running towards the front entrance when we noticed three dogs, Dobermans, running around in a small tight little circle. They were barking rapidly right in the middle of the entrance. They were chasing each other, and where one's tail would end, the next Doberman's head was inches behind. We ran off to the left-hand side of the entrance and jumped the fence there by the softball fields. I remember cutting my hands on the fence. We all ran home. I remember two brothers were us and one other guy. I called my cousin to ask if he remembered anything, and he said he remembered the water spigot that turned on and didn't have a timer. He remembered that we were getting crazy responses, and he remembered our friend yelling out and all of us running, but he didn't see anything and he didn't remember the dogs, but he remembered me mentioning the dogs to him afterwards. Now, he's supposed to call me back if he remembers anything relevant, but I know for a fact that I've never gone back to a cemetery with a Ouija board again. I had an experience with my soon-to-be brother-in-law. It was Halloween. Weird stuff started happening as the brother-in-law, my cousin and I headed out to a place called Five Mile. We were going to check out the place where witches and some satanic cults were practicing their rituals. As we're headed down the road, my brother-in-law and I realized the headlights dim. Soon after, the radio cuts off. Then the car dies altogether. The headlights come back on and we sigh in relief thinking we've made it and will stay alive. That's when we notice something moving in the bushes. Well, okay, we're out in the middle of nowhere, not something that should be odd at all. But then you felt it, that feeling of dread, knowing we were about to see something we really didn't want to see. I look over at my soon-to-be brother-in-law and that's when the thing walks out of the bushes. We stare for a minute, looking like idiots, that's when I hear brother-in-law ask if it's standing on its back legs, and I answer, yes it is. We continue to watch this thing walk for about five yards before crossing the middle of the road and jump off into the opposite side of bushes. Car fires up on its own after whatever leaves. We look at each other, then the brother-in-law hits the gas and we flip it and we're on our way home. We get home, 
younger cousin goes to sleep, brother-in-law and I stay up trying to rationalize what we've all just witnessed. Closest we could figure is that we just saw a coyote come out of the bushes and walk across the road on its hind legs. The only problem with that, outside of the coyote crossing the road on its hind legs, is that we both realized that the hind legs weren't bent or angled right. They were bent and angled like a human's legs. We also realized the coyote was bigger than either of us have ever seen before, and that's when we both stopped talking about the subject and just tried to go to sleep. Good times on Halloween in Oklahoma. My mother said she saw a demon on Halloween. As a backstory, she has this friend who likes to communicate with spirits. Lately, my mom has been making excuses to keep her away because she thinks this friend attracts bad things by doing what she does. On to Halloween day. A couple people were at my mom's house, a woman and her son, and they were sitting in the kitchen. You know how it's said demonic entities smell like sulfur? When the woman walked in, she kept saying there was a gas leak in the house that smelled really bad. Nobody else smelled anything. At some point during the visit, the woman and son started arguing with each other. All of a sudden, my mom heard a shrieking sound. When she glanced up, she saw a four-foot-tall demonic creature standing between the woman and son. It was very wrinkly, had bristly hair, a huge nose, and reddish-yellow eyes. She gasped, so the woman and son stopped arguing to see what was wrong but my mom didn't tell them that she saw something. My mom no longer saw the demon, but within 30 seconds of seeing it, the woman felt really ill and had to throw up. She started turning a purple color and said it felt like she was choking. They eventually went home and my mom called the woman to tell her what she saw and heard. Well, the woman said she heard the shriek too, but assumed it was coming from outside somewhere. My mom is into crystals and all that stuff, so she was invited over to cleanse the house that same night. When my aunt was walking around, she stopped and said it was ice cold. She just so happened to be standing where the demon creature was seen earlier. Then the cold moved to behind my mother like it went to hide. So my aunt did her thing and sent the demon away. Today she's coming over to smudge the house. Now I'm searching online for similar descriptions of the creature. If anybody has any similar experiences and has any advice, it would be more than welcome. I'm not sure whether this could be a coincidence or not, but every Halloween I get an identical scratch on my forearm at 2200. It all started when I was 11 when my friends and I went to the scary wooded area called Iron Hill back in my old hometown. After following the train tracks down there for about 20 minutes, we'd finally reach the hill. We'd been there before in the daylight, but this was the first time for night and was on Halloween night. I had told my mother I was getting candy and then staying the night at my friend's house. Once up there, we'd go around with our little walkie-talkies and cheap cameras to see if we could catch a ghost. I was really into ghost adventures at the time, so I may have been a little snotty with what could have been there after seeing Zach Baggins taunt ghosts all night. After 30 minutes of walking around the woods, my friend decided it would be best that we'd be getting home, and as we were going back down the hill, something had pushed me and I fell down. I hadn't shown any signs of injury until we got back onto the tracks. I pulled out my flashlight and examined my arm that was burning and noticed the scratch going down my arm. I didn't really think much of it until now, as the scratches are returning again for another Halloween. If any of you have any idea what could be going on, I'd be eager to hear. I had to work Halloween night. It was alright by me, my wife and her friend were both off and they took my daughter trick-or-treating. But anyways, I was at work in the break room talking to two other co-workers. I'm pretty sure we were talking about local gangs at the time. Clear as day from behind me and to the right, I hear a little girl say, Hello, in exactly the same tone you would if you, well, heard a little girl but couldn't see her. My immediate instinct was that I had butt-dialed someone, maybe my wife, 
my daughter picked up the phone. It seemed logical as my phone is always in my right pocket. No dice, phone screen locked, no call history that wasn't from hours before on my phone or on the Facebook Messenger app. My second instinct was to gauge the expressions of my coworkers. They both described exactly what I heard and denied being the cause. Now I feel like I've been hallucinating little girls and seeing them out of the corner of my eye, but I'm not sure if it's just a fear response to my experience. I'm not sure what to do. I performed a seance on Halloween. I had to do it by myself because no one around me wanted to for one reason or another, whether staunchly anti-spiritual or scared. Not a big deal, but whatever. It was my first seance ever, so I wanted to do things slowly. My dog died last December, so I figured why not try and contact her. I was her primary caretaker, and I made the decision to send her on her way when her suffering was the greatest. When performing the seance, I used invocations of chosen faith, focused on her urn and picture frame, and very quickly, I mean a matter of seconds, I felt her presence in front of me, sniffing at my toes. I shared some words with her and got the notion she didn't quite understand what was happening, but she was happy to be there, a metaphysical tilted head I guess. I closed out the ceremony, told all the spirits to go on their way, and went back up to spend the rest of Halloween with my friends. Now seeing as this is my first time, I do have some questions. 1. Since the time frame between beginning and contact was so small, do you think it was possible I made contact with her? Was she still here and I just attracted her attention by actually speaking? 2. I felt sensitive to these sorts of things for a while. I know what you're thinking but hear me out. And this house hasn't had anything besides some on and off again weird things in the basement. But since doing the seance, every now and then I pick up on more activity. Is it possibly related to the seance? Were they always here and performing it riled them up? Or could it possibly be my imagination running wild? It was a rained out Halloween, no trick or treaters. Well, one trick at least. As I was going to bed, I heard a knock at my door and thought it might be the student staying with me with a question before bed, but I was tired so I muted the TV and waited for another knock just to make sure. The knock came so I cracked the door open and peeked into the pitch black hallway. Thinking this was a prank, I went out to the hallway to see who had knocked, check all of the rooms within hiding distance, and found no one. Going to be honest, I sort of enjoy when stuff like this happens to me even though if my first thought was, oh crap, I opened the door to something. When I was a kid there were two weeks when something would knock at my door at 2am my parents were divorced and my mom worked overnights a lot. So when something knocked at my bedroom door, I knew better than to open it. But it really didn't feel like Halloween till a few minutes ago. It was now going on Halloween and we have just moved into a house almost two months ago. I love it, five acres and a lovely home great place to raise my kids. Then I met the neighbor across the road. Turns out his daughter lives to our left, nephew to our right, sister two houses one way, brother three houses the other way. Not uncommon but still interesting to learn. The guy's 82 but looks and acts like he's 60. He's also one of the biggest weirdos I've ever met. He told us our yard is to be mowed every five days. This is farmland, there is no homeowners association, and my yard is hayfield, we are bailing. Then he says that I'm not to address him directly, but to have my husband call or go through his wife if we needed anything. He said I should grow my hair out as to look more motherly. I just smiled and nodded, attributing his attitude to age. Days later, a knock on the door. The gentleman introduces himself as neighbor diagonally across the street hands me a Bible, says everyone on the street attends a certain church. His smile is all teeth. Everything about him screams sleazeball, turns, still grinning, to walk down my porch steps saying, see you there Sunday, before I can answer. 
Saturday, my husband is outside when a car pulls up. First neighbor's wife walks right into my house like she owns the place, gasps at the Halloween decorations, and asks to speak to the woman of the house privately outside. Yeah, outside sounds like a great idea, I snapped, more than a little agitated. Again, I consider age. Among the topics were, you need to mow the yard, my husband is going to tell yours that you've been driving and walking out of the yard to get the mail, you need to take down those skeletons, they're vulgar, I will be babysitting your infant son twice a week for five hours since he is the first fresh blood in the area in a long time. I kid you not, her exact words. At this point, my mama bear becomes way stronger than my southern manners, so I stand up and tell her to leave. She seems unfazed, telling me I need to be more ladylike, so I tell her to leave or I'll call the cops. She huffs and leaves. She and her husband have parked in the road and stared down my house twice now. The church fellow has left us handwritten letters in our mail every week since that first Sunday. We missed you at church this Sunday. You need to be there this week. I already went to the backwoods useless cops for whatever good it did me. I feel like I moved into the wrong turn movie neighborhood. Which is perfect for me because it's just in time for Halloween. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. If you'd like to get early access to all future narrations, be sure to check out my Patreon, where you'll have full access for only a dollar or more a month. And be sure to be the coolest person at your Halloween party with some Let's Read merch, sold at shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash let's read. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.